if you can just keep believing when nothing in you is working, when all your external forces have given way, if you can just manage to somehow keep hoping, you have a chance. You just can't become hopeless. If you can just keep hope alive, you can make it. Because if you keep hoping, it is really faith. You just got to transpose it into I hope this happened to I believe this can happen. Life is like a grindstone. It can polish you or it can pulverize you, depending on how you position yourself. There's one side of pain that's the suffering and the discomfort side of pain. But then there's another side of pain that's called effort. It's called glory. It's called if you can find a way to push through pain, there's something greater on the other side of it. Every time you find yourself saying that you can't do something, putting yourself down, being negative about you and the possibilities for you, you've got to literally catch yourself. And you've got to affirm to yourself, hey, hey, no, 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 I can make it. There's some way this can happen for me. You've got to remind yourself that you've got powers within you, talents within you that you haven't even reached for yet. That once you give yourself an opportunity to try and to experiment with your life, to stretch, you'll find out you can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. I'm challenging you to change the way you talk to you. Cover your head, cover your thoughts, cover your imaginations, cover the words that are coming into your mind, cover what you're saying to yourself. What you are saying to yourself determines whether you win or lose. What you say to yourself has all the world to do with how far you can go. Not what you're going through. Not what's happening in your life. Not what's going on in your home. Not what's happening in your finances. The blessing is on you. Don't give up on who you are because of how things are turning out. Because the blessing is on who you are. You've got to say yes, yes to my dreams, yes to me, yes I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made, doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured, doesn't matter about what I've done, I can make it. There's going to be blessings, there's going to be miracles, there's going to be opportunities. Oh yes, there's going to be some struggles, there's going to be some challenges, there's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. If you can get your mind out, you can get your money out. You can get your family out. You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you can stop you from being free. Grab yourself by the hand and say, we're coming out of here. I know what it is to walk the floor and you don't know how you're going to make it when people no longer believe in you. And you got to say to yourself, when you fail again and again, they tell you, no, sometimes with tears in your eyes, it's possible. When life knocks you down, sometimes you have to take two steps backwards to go forward. When life stagger you, the thing that'll get you up on your knees, get you standing in the center of the ring and keep on fighting is, it's possible. If I just stand long enough, I can pull this off. I can do it. I'm putting it out here. I'm not going to rest until I have it. It's necessary. I'm going to do it. It's on me. No one's going to make it happen for me. I get some help and assistance, but I know that it's on me. Will it be easy? No, it's going to be hard, but it doesn't matter what it costs. Because whatever you have to do, it's worth it because it's your life's purpose. And once you know that, it is done. I ask you to set a 100-day plan. Keep my life clean and keep my eyes open. You don't let sin or guilt or regret pile up like garbage in your life. Because you keep short accounts with God through confessing to Him and, and through receiving forgiveness. Protect your peace. We should get up each morning believing for a good day, expecting favor, knowing that God is directing our steps. At the same time, we should realize everything may not go perfect. Choose life that you and your descendants may live, making a point out of the fact that every decision we make not only affects us, but it affects the other people around us and even generations to come. Let's be honest, and I know there's like five prayer warriors in this room, but for the other thousands of us, we passively pray. Okay, I'm going to say it stronger because y'all are real fake right now. We worry out loud and call it prayer. We are in spiritual warfare. 
And that this spiritual warfare, it always begins in our mind. There is a battle going on for your thoughts. There is a battle going on for your thinking. And the enemy, the way that he tends to attack us is he comes and he lies and he puts little lies in our minds. Here's an opportunity right here in front of me. Things are going well. Things are beautiful. They like me. They like me. And then something in your mind and in your spirit says, let me try and figure out a way to this up. Before you label yourself as someone who has social anxiety, have you ever considered maybe you're just bad at small talk and you hate being fake at the gatherings? Is it possible? This place where we are right now, what we're experiencing, this is not normal. This is different. My business partner trying to discourage me. Oh, don't, don't go on now. You were on last week. Most of the problems that beset us are very, very complex, and they need to be decomposed in a sophisticated way into their constituent elements until they're differentiated enough so that partial solutions for some of the problem can arise as a consequence of practical endeavors. One thing to think that it's impossible, but when you start telling people it's impossible, it takes on a whole new meaning. You may think, I'll never break this illness. I'll never get well. I'll never meet the right person. Those thoughts come to all of us. You can't stop that. My challenge is don't give them life by speaking them out. I'm going to stay right on this because I know when God is speaking and he's speaking to somebody, it's a cloud the size of a man's hand. Yet, when planted, it grows. It's a little boy's lunch. It's only five loaves and two fish. Jesus said, put it in my hands because yet, when planted, it grows. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just got to quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're going to see exactly why it went that way. And you're going to be okay with it. And I'm sure a lot of you right now, you're looking for something to help you with your problems. And the Word of God actually is so powerful and so strong that it, it ministers faith to you and it helps you believe that God is going to take care of you. You're going to feel so much better. Why? Just because you heard the Word of God. We were training bigger, stronger, faster quitters. We weren't diving into the sewer. Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Most of us aren't willing to talk about it. I'm going to talk about my dungeon. I wasn't building that so-called mental toughness. The dream will destroy you, right? Let it. The first version of Eric Thomas would never be able to stand in front of you guys. The first version of Eric Thomas, the high school dropout, that guy would have never been able to stand here and help you. I had to destroy that Eric Thomas. That Eric Thomas that grew up in Detroit and had like that Detroit mentality, while I love it, it doesn't transfer to every community. And my gift has developed and it developed and has taken me many places. You have something that you brought to the universe and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing, this is what I do well. And becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me. There's a couple different types of stress. Now, if it's something that you can control that's causing you stress, well, why aren't you getting control of it? Now, there's also stress that's caused by things that you cannot control. So if you can't control something and you can't get control of it, you have to at least embrace what you can. You know, there's that old idea that God has a book, you know, and keeps track of everything in heaven. It's like, okay, okay, you know, maybe it's not a book. Fine. But that is a really useful thing to think about because, well, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think people get away with things all the time. I tell you, I've never seen it. What I see instead is that thing happens, right? They, someone twists the fabric of reality and they get walloped and they think, oh my God, that's so unfair. A person who has purpose in their life they have something to go for, some meaning. One writer described it 
for some people it becomes a magnificent obsession. And for you and I, maybe it doesn't need to be that dramatic as a magnificent obsession. But it has to be something that does something to us, something that pulls us, especially into the future. You might get the vision from a role model, you might get the vision just from coming up with a new idea. But in order to figure out how to go from where you are to where you want to be, to close the gap from where you are to where you want to be, it's best to learn by other people's experience whenever you can. So get a role model, get their strategy, and go to work. Get into action. This is not just being positive, this is your faith being released. Proverbs 4 says, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Are your thoughts helping you or hurting you? Are you thinking power thoughts, victory thoughts, well-able thoughts, or are you thinking defeated thoughts? I got that beneath the surface thing. I got that Saturday thing waiting on something to come up out of a tomb and resurrect for the healing and salvation of the world. So he, he narrated his situation with his faith. And so he became the father of many nations, and we are his seed. Failure means you've now learned another valuable lesson that pushes you one step closer to success. I'm willing to bet that I have failed more times than anyone in this room because I have attempted so many things that you have no idea what I've attempted and failed. But I don't let the failures define. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it better than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Embrace whatever comes to you. Don't run from it. Step toward it. Don't try and duck it like most people do. See, most people want it easy. See, if you easy come, easy what? Easy go. See, but when you go at what you're going to deal with and you deal with the difficulties of it, but they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it, you know? They don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, wh where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now, that's it. You, you want to improve? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. You initiate the action aggressively. Other things you're going to be doubtful about. You're not going to know which way is up and which way is down. But there are things that you're doing that you know you shouldn't do. Now, some of those you won't stop doing for whatever reason. You don't have the discipline or maybe there's a secondary payoff or you don't believe it's necessary or it's too much of a sacrifice or you're angry or resentful or, or afraid. Who knows? So forget about those for now. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces all of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode and change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. You just go to work on the right thing. The most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're gonna live in a beautiful state. And what the hell does that mean? It means that you're not going to suffer. It means a beautiful state is that you're going to be happy. But that's only one. Or you're going to feel creative. Or you're going to be passionate. Or you're going to be in awe of something. In the tough times, you have to especially be on guard. It's very tempting to vent your frustration. Tell people how the loan didn't go through. How bad the medical report was. How these people just didn't treat you right but continually talking about the problem. That's not only going to make you more discouraged, but you're giving that problem more life. Turn it around. Don't talk about the problem. Talk about the promise. All of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. And people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it, and you know it, and you know that you know that you know this. If you don't know anything else, you know this. Take the step. Step aggressively towards your fear. And that 
that step towards your fear is the step into bravery. Because we, we're, we're scared of what we don't know. And there is only one way to learn and to know, and that is to confront that fear. And that is the beginning of wisdom. And it's something that deeply terrifies me. You know, we are ever since last September, when I came to more like broader public attention, one of the things I've been terrified of making a mistake because I certainly know I'm more than capable of making a mistake. And thank God so far, either I haven't paid one or no one's found out about it. And here's the other great advantage if you have purpose for the future. It pulls you through all kinds of challenges and all kinds of difficulties. If you don't have these strong purposes for the future, it's easy to get swallowed by a bad day. It's easy to be almost annihilated by a poor month. And it's easy sometimes to almost disappear beneath the waves of a, a year that goes backwards if you don't have something to pull you beyond that year. So jot down what a breakthrough is and let me give you the three steps of it. A breakthrough is a moment in time. That's what it is. It's a moment in time. It's a moment where suddenly what was impossible becomes possible. And what makes it possible is you take immediate massive what? Immediate massive what? Action.